Hello students, welcome to Eden Two and Public Health Industry. Today we will be having a session on planning and evaluation. So planning cycle is a commonly asked essay question, and evaluation is a short note or it can be a short essay. The types of evaluation. So let's see what is planning cycle. So planning, by definition, it is a decision about a course of action. Okay. So this cycle is important. You need to draw the cycle. And the question is asked. The first thing is identifying a problem. Then uh, you need to do the needs assessment. Then comes the data analysis. Before that, we need to collect the data. Then we have the setting up priorities. After setting up priorities, you need to have uh, goals and objectives. Then you go for its resources. Then, if there is any uh, alternative strategy, and before that, you need to understand the constraints. Okay. Then finally, you go for implementing your plan. The best plan you will be implementing. Then you will be monitoring and evaluating. So we'll see the step-by-step -step procedure of planning cycle. So by definition, it is a systematic approach to define the problem, setting up priorities. Determining the alternative strategies and a method of implementation. So why we need to do planning? Because we know planning without planning there will be lots of wastage of time, money, and workforce. So purpose of the first planning, the uh, purpose is to match the limited resources with many problems. We may have unlimited desires but with very limited resources. So with a proper planning, we can manage it mass limited resources with many problems and also to eliminate the wasteful expenditure or duplication of expenditure then to develop the best course of action to accomplish a defined objective so that is the purpose of planning so first what we do is we identify the problem okay then we do the needs assessment then data analysis let's take an example we are having or we are going to a village where high prevalence of dental cases. So village people ask the, the health people or the dental workforce to control or reduce the DMFT. DMFT, you know, the caries prevalence or the caries experience. Reduce the caries prevalence from a 10 to 5. So that is our problem. The presence of high caries prevalence in a community. Okay. So first we have the problem that is the presence of high caries prevalence so we understand the need after that we do a survey okay that is conducting a needs assessment by survey then we do the analysis of the available data after the survey we get a data and we do analysis after that we set up priorities which age group which group of people we should implement our program that is priorities then we select our goal objectives then we find out the constraints then the resources finally implement evaluate okay so needs assessment so once we understand the problem we need to understand the need okay need of the problem so for understanding need what we do is we do survey so if we don't have a fund for conducting a survey survey means we study the problem study the caries prevalence in that village or community so what we do is we coordinate with some of the research activity which is already happening or which is already done previously we take data from those people or those research so the surveys that have been done in the past by other organization can be utilized if we don't have a separate fund for that data collection so we can collect our data using questionnaires, examinations or personal interviews. So what we get, we get general information like age, gender, locality, socioeconomic status, all those things. Then the peculiar, the, the information what we need that the dental problems, the number of caries, number of missing tooth, number of filling tooth, all those things we get. And the current status of the dental health programs which is happening in that village or community and all the policies of the government the availability of fund facility labor and if any programs which is already going through in the community that is preventive dental programs after that we need to analyze the data we need to split the data 
how many are into uh, rich group, how many are into mid. This is just one example based on the socioeconomic status. We can categorize into based on gender, based on uh, occupation, based on socioeconomic status. All categories we need to analyze it. After analysis, we need to set up priorities because we have very less amount of fund, very less amount of workforce, and we have a very big, large group of people to cover up. So it is not possible to uh, give information or give the treatment for every uh, person who is involved. So we need to set up a priority group or a people who requires the treatment very uh, in that very uh, serious manner. So those people we need to select. They are the priority groups. So it is a method of imposing people's value and judgment what is important into the raw data. So we select some priority group. Mostly in these type of cases, we select the younger age group, school children, because their teeth are in developing state. So we can fill it fast at the early stages. So they won't have problem in future. Unless uh, if uh, they have very um, serious conditions and which needs to uh, be referred to dental clinics and the treatment, complicated treatment done. Mostly we take the younger age group. Okay, if we take older age group, what happens is uh, they are into 40s or 50s. By the fund available, we do treatment on the older people. So we are uh, leaving those people, I mean the younger age group, they will get diseases in future period. But there is no, uh, overall we, uh, we are not having any benefit for the uh, our goal that is goal is to reduce the uh, caries prevalence so if we are focusing our program on the younger age group the overall prevalence will be reduced in the uh, maybe five years or uh, ten year period so we always select priority group and focus our program in those priority groups so uh, as i said uh, we need to understand who needs the care most and this is affecting large effect people and high risk groups they are the high risk group means the children or adolescents i'm talking about the dental caries after that we need to select a goal and objective goal is like a broad statement we can say goal uh, of this program is to reduce the dmft or caries prevalence from dmft from 10 to 5 or caries prevalence from 60 percentage to 20 percentage that is a broad statement but objectives objectives are more specific and they are the measures to achieve the goal okay by what all the programs we are conducting we are planning for a pit and fissure sealant we are planning for a educational uh, interventions uh, then the fluoride rinse program brushing uh, a demonstration program all are the measures to achieve the bigger goal of reducing dental caries so goal is a broad statement Objectives are specific uh, measures which aims to achieve the goal. Then we need to uh, identify the resources. So resources can be money, then the workforce, then the time. So we need to have uh, ample uh, enough fund, then the workforce, then the time. So all these resources, we should make it ready for the program. But what happens is there will be constraints. The agency which uh, already committed to donate the fund, uh, they might change the word last moment. So those constraints we need to expect and we need to have a plan B always. So if one doesn't work, we should always go for plan B. So if somebody is uh, promising us some fund or some material, we should always have a backup plan. If this doesn't work, we should always go to the plan B. And make things happen so that is alternative strategy we should always have plan B once the program is ready with our goals objectives priorities what we do is we implement the program that is the operational phase we start uh, implementing that is by uh, taking our workforce to schools we give pit and fisher programs we educate the patient we provide this brushing demonstration, then we give this uh, oral uh, fluoride rinse program, all those things are happening. 
but we need to have a evaluation and monitoring we need to continuously monitor and evaluate this program otherwise we will not meet the objectives okay so once the uh, program is in implementation we should always specify clearly the activities be sure someone is responsible for the activity and coordinate individuals who may carry out the different tasks then identify all preparatory steps before doing the activity list the steps in order in which they must occur and check for any missing steps that must be added then determine when each step should begin and end and consult the organization affected by activities identify potential problems opportunities and specify what resources will be needed and the resources specify what constraints must be addressed make sure all people involved know what is expected okay then comes the monitoring and surveillance so monitoring is uh, closely looking at the problem or closely looking at the program and making changes immediately surveillance is overall surveillance you know surveillance cameras uh, they keep on uh, looking at you while driving they'll take pictures and later uh, after some time you'll be getting the notice of traffic violation that is surveillance monitoring is like on the road uh, the traffic people will be waiting for us if we are doing some violation they will be catching us and making an immediate fight so that is monitoring the other one is surveillance so monitoring and if surveillance that checks how well the program is meeting its stated objectives okay and how well individuals are doing their jobs and how well equipments are functioning and how appropriate and adequate the facilities are then comes evaluation evaluation is checking how well the program met its objectives there are two types of evaluation and there are criteria the purpose is uh, we should know what works and what does it okay and um, its accountability so the criteria for evaluation of tender services from WHO they are effectiveness efficiency appropriateness adequacy so two types of evaluation which is very important for your exam that is formative evaluation and summative evaluation so you just take an example of your exams the internal exams and your university exam internal exams are formative evaluation and your university exam is a summative evaluation because in formative evaluation you have a chance to correct if something goes wrong you can correct in the next time so the program is happening so formative evaluation will be done at a two months interval if it is for a one year two year program formative evaluation will be uh, keep on uh, happening after three months after six months after nine months if something goes wrong if the program is not going as per its objective it can be corrected that is formative evaluation just like your internal exam or class test whereas formative evaluation is like after the program you will have evaluation and we will check whether it uh, met its objectives if it met its objective we can replicate this otherwise we can throw it off just like your university exam you might fail or you might pass there is no chance of correction the second time you can do it a second time you can uh, go for the program again or you can just throw it off so it's like a uh, summative evaluation at the end what you are doing is summative and during the course you are doing is formative evaluation so elements of evaluation is relevance progress accessibility acceptability efficiency effectiveness and impact so let's take this formative and summative in detail so formative evaluation is performed to determine how well the students have mastered various elements okay whereas summative it is to grade the students at the end of the course i am taking a student and its exam as uh, exam scenario here informative tests can be administered after completion of the units okay whereas summative deals with the whole okay the entire subject the formative is through units in formative evaluation we get immediate feedback and there is chances of correction the summative test can be given after the completion of a course and in formative diagnosis a diagnostic and progress test can be possible but in summative there is no feedback possible so that was about uh, planning and evaluation the most important question is the planning cycle 
that can be asked as a essay then uh, the evaluation uh, it can be asked as a short note or short essay the types of evaluation the components the summative can be asked as a separate short note or the comparison formative and summative evaluation so that was about planning and evaluation i will come up with new topic in public health dentistry in the interview thank you